Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I thought before we get into some more effects heavy lessons, we talk about an important concept and that is the video mixdown. Now most people hear about video mixdowns and they think that it sounds like a fantastic idea. It's a way to basically take multiple layers inside a media composer and actually merge them down and create a brand new piece of media on one track. Now, it might sound like a great idea in theory, but there's a lot of problems you can run into if you don't think things through thoroughly. And, believe it or not, there's actually a way to do a pseudo audio mixdown, a non-destructive way to do an audio mixdown that Final Cut Pro editors know as nesting. It's not called nesting inside of Media Composer and Symphony. It's actually called collapsing. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the difference between a video mixdown and a collapse and why you're going to want to choose one over the other. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's alt tab into Avid's Symphony. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do to talk about Video Mixdown is to create a composite. So let's just do that. What we're going to do is find a clip here. We're actually going to find two clips that are relatively the same length. So let's just use, oh we got some here that are about 28 seconds. This is not too bad. What I'm going to do is just take about, you know, well, let's just say about that much of it. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to edit that into my timeline because I have multiple bins open. I'm going to be asked which bin do I want to edit this new sequence into. And we'll put it into, appropriately enough, sequences. And let's find something, a shot here, that's relatively the same length. What we're going to do to create a new video track, Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac, obviously. What we're going to do is hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows and hit B to edit this clip in. So what we now have is one clip right on top of the other. Now let's create the composite because obviously sticking two clips right on top of each other doesn't make a composite. So what we're going to do, we're going to hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. You'll see we're on one of my favorite tools, the 3D Warp. What I'm going to do is drag it down here, drop it onto my shot. Let's step into Effects Mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. If you don't have Effects Mode mapped to your keyboard, you can find it right here, or you can find it right over here at the top of your timeline. So what we're going to do, just move right back to the beginning here. I'm going to take this clip that we have obviously applied, the effect applied to. What we're going to do is put the scale at, I don't know, about 30, I think. Nice and small, that's looking pretty good. Now because I'm zoomed back a little bit here, what I can do is just zoom in full frame, or I can zoom back here, just to see a little bit of the border around. Now why would I want to do that? Well, so I can take the clip that I've shrunk down and stick it right outside the frame. Now you'll see as soon as I do that, I now have a keyframe added right over here inside of my keyframe window here, my keyframe viewer. What I'm going to do now is simply grab my position, X position. We're going to drag it over here. Now what I actually need to do is just undo that because I want to add a keyframe in here first so that when I drag this over, you'll see that I now have the line that represents animation inside of my preview window here. What we're going to do is step back in so I can see the actual sequence here. And you can see that we can now see the composite. What I'm going to do is simply hit play. Looking very nice. Now of course because this takes place over about 26 seconds it's a little bit slow. But that's okay for the purposes of what we're doing. Now there's one more thing that I want to do here. Create another new video track by hitting Control and Y on Windows. Command and Y on the Mac. We're going to add a new title. What I'm going to do here is just wait to be prompted for the title tool. And we're just simply going to type in Motocross. Again, nothing says nice and bold and in your face like my favorite font, Impact. And what we're going to do is add a drop shadow value of 2. And we're going to soften that up with a value of 4. Say apply, looking very nice. Now for me, let's just say apply here and say OK. For me, I think I want this to be a bit bigger. Let's make it about, oh, I don't know, 84. That's looking better. And of course we want motocross not to be on two lines, we want it to be on one line, just like such. Very cool. Let's save this title out, call it motocross, we'll stick it into sequences and say save. We're just going to close the title tool here, and let's just edit this into our timeline. Now I don't really need to animate this, because I've already got a lot of good animation happening here. You'll see we've got motocross, our animation at the bottom, and this is a composite. Now. Let's just say hypothetically, you know, this is only three layers. So let's just say hypothetically that this was a 15 layer composite that we created. 
And we want to simplify this because 15 layers is a lot to look at in a timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my tracks. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. I'm going to navigate up to Special. And I'm going to come down to Video Mix Down. Now once I have Video Mix Down selected, you'll see I only have three options. First, where do I want this mix down to go? In this case, to the sequences bin. You'll see I can send it to Motocross, but sequences is fine. What is the target drive? The drive we want this new clip created on. The Y drive is fine. And what resolution do we want? DNX HD 60, I am OK with. So what I'm going to do is simply say OK. You'll see that Media Composer is creating the video mix down. Once it's done, it's going to appear over here in the sequences bin. We can drag it right in here into our preview window. I'm going to hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. And let's edit this into our timeline. And what I now have is that same composite, not on three layers, but on one layer. And you know what? This is fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the computer down. I'm going to go home for the night, come back in. We'll pick things up in the morning. So let's fast forward, you know, 12, 14 hours. I get up. I come in, sit down. I'm ready to work. Producer looks at me and says, you know what? This isn't motocross. This is Moto X Cross. So we're going to need to change that. So can you just go in you know, and quickly update that title? And you sit there and think to yourself, um, I can't actually do that because I mixed this down. So you're going to have to give me about half an hour to go back and rebuild this entire animation. Well, you know what? That's the disadvantage of using video mix down. In certain cases, you're going to want to use it. It's very few and far between. What I prefer to do, I'm just going to undo what I just did because I have the luxury of doing that because I only just created this element, is instead of doing a mix down, we're going to do a collapse. Now, what is a collapse, you might ask? Now, anyone that's coming from the Final Cut world will know a collapse is the same thing as a nest. It's basically a way to take these layers to merge them down as an effect, not as an actually brand new piece of media, so that we're able to go in and alter this stack after the fact. Now, how do you find Collapse? Well, what we do is we navigate up to Tools, we come down to Command Palette, and you're going to see that I'm in the Other category, and there's Collapse right here. Now, for me, of course, because I use it all the time, I have it mapped onto my keyboard of the shortcut of F9. So what I'm going to do is simply close the Effects Palette or the Command Palette, and all I'm going to do with all my layers selected is simply hit F9 on the keyboard to collapse all of these elements. Now, for me, the problem that I always run into, especially when I'm recording, is that Camtasia Studio ends up taking over some of the function keys that I normally use inside a Media Composer. But never fear, there's always multiple ways to do the same thing. So even though my shortcut happens to be F9 to collapse this, uh, actually this composite down, I can also find Collapse right here at the top of my timeline. So all I'm going to do is simply hit Collapse, and you'll see what we have now is essentially what we had when we did a video mix down. I know you're probably saying to yourself, well, Kev, if it's ex essentially exactly the same thing that you had when you did the video mix down, how do I get in and alter this if I have to? Well, you know what? No problem. Let's use the Moto X Cross as an example. What we're going to do is we can come in and we can get to these elements one of two ways. We can use the step in or step out method by simply navigating down to the bottom of my timeline and hitting step in. I'm actually going to step into that effect, that collapse, and you'll see here are all of my layers. Now, if you prefer working right here from the timeline, if you happen to have you know, all of your edits in here, all you have to do is simply double click on the element, and you'll see that Media Composer Symphony will actually open the element up for you to get in and make any adjustments that you need to make. So for example, if we wanted to change this to the Moto X Cross, what I'm going to do is right click here. We're simply going to say Edit Title. Now I'm using Media Composer version 6.5, so please keep that in mind. What we're going to do is just add a few spaces in here. Let's actually just bring this down a little bit because I need to make a big X here. What we're actually going to do is just copy and paste this. We'll just bring it down here just so that we got the same font, same everything. Let's make an X here. Uh, let's make it, I don't know, let's say 200. Sure. I'm going to stick it up here roughly where it's going to go. And we'll just add a little bit more space in here for Moto X Cross, just like the producer wanted. Very cool. Simply going to say Save Title. And guess what I've done now? I've now had the ability to go in and make an adjustment to this element. And if I double click again, back on the collapse, everything's going to reappear the way it was with one single layer. And I can simply come back and hit Play. And instead of the element being a destructible element, meaning it takes all of those elements, 
combines them together into a new clip that doesn't let me go in and alter them, this has now become a non-destructible process by using the collapse command, a fantastic command inside of Media Composer and Symphony, so that after the fact I can get in and make any adjustments I might need to make. So that's basically the difference between a video mixdown and a collapse. Video mixdown destructive, once you lay that into your timeline, if you quit out of Media Composer or Symphony or anything like that, you're going to lose the ability to go back in and alter that after the fact. Now I say that, but in a later lesson I'm going to show you how if you need to, you might be able to get in and save something that you think that you may have overwritten in your edit a couple of days ago. But I'm going to leave that as a little teaser. Okay, so I hope this tutorial has shown you the difference between a video mixdown and a collapse and why in most cases you're probably going to want to choose to do the collapse as opposed to the mixdown because as we've talked about, the mixdown is a destructive process. You take all of your layers, you merge them into a new piece of media, drop that into your timeline. No way to go back in and alter them. Whereas the collapse, or like I said for Final Cut Pro editors, they know that more commonly referred to as a nest, is a non-destructive way to take multiple layers and collapse them down into one track that you can easily get in and alter after the fact if a producer ever needs you to make a change before you output your project to tape. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.